So it has been a great Saturday so far. I actually finished up one of my projects that I've been working on for like the past week or two as I've had a chance and free time to work on it. I have, and that's the ultimate Dreamcast. It's done and it's awesome. I'm going to try to have a video out for it for tomorrow, but it's essentially a Dreamcast that loads games from SD cards and will play natively through HDMI. Uh, how, about, how about I just show you a quick snippet very quick of Sonic Adventure running from the system. Yes, it's pretty awesome. So tomorrow we'll, we'll hopefully tomorrow we'll check it out and play some other games and I'll show you the build process and kind of what went into making it. Awesome stuff though. Uh, but something else actually came to my attention as uh, several people sent this over and I took a look at it and it is an interesting thing that is happening here with Nintendo and the Switch. Now, of course, there are uh, some situations with the Switch where we've seen people doing homebrew and hacking actually overclocked the system and have got pretty good results from it, right? They've got a uh, faster load times, uh, a, a more stable resolution, more stable frame rate, like a uh, resolution doesn't drop super low or maybe gets higher even in handheld mode. Uh, that's kind of been something we've been seeing a lot of. And something that's, that's kind of neat that's taken place now is Nintendo has seemingly unlocked a performance mode for people to use or developers to use, I should say, for the CPU side of the Switch. Now, there are several different performance modes that can be used in handheld mode. Remember we just talked about Mortal Kombat 11 using a 468 megahertz mode in handheld mode, which after hearing some people's takes on the game, I heard a lot of people say that it felt like it was uh, it was it was heating up pretty badly. It was going to explode in their hands, for example. And uh, apparently Zelda uses the same one, uh, Breath of the Wild. That's apparently used that for a little while, uh, but Mortal Kombat, interestingly, seems to make it work a lot harder. It might be because it's like a constant thing happening, and they're trying to maintain 60 frames the whole time, so I'm sure the system's pretty stressed. But now the CPU appears to be opened up. Let me actually show you some of the frequencies here. This is from Switch Brew, the performance configurations that we have, and... This is kind of this is kind of neat because we have, of course, several different CPU clocks that they have found, and then of course we know about how when it's docked, you can get like you know 768 megahertz, but generally it'll stay at uh, one gigahertz for the CPU. It looks like there is this new clock speed that is just over 1.75 gigahertz. They have it set up at an exact value of 1.785. Uh, which is about right, basically 1.75 gigahertz. And that is a pretty large jump over one gigahertz on the CPU that we're, we're used to, right? We're used to uh, one gigahertz. And uh, of course, if you're if you're playing there, you'd have like 768, uh, you know, you have one gigahertz on the CPU and then 768 megahertz on the uh, GPU. That's kind of what we've been used to at this point. And it's, of course, had middling results for some games, uh, whether it's uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, for example, having a crazy low resolution at times and uh, bad frame rates and everything uh, as well. So why would they overclock the CPU up to that degree? I mean, that's a large, that's like a 75% jump, right? That's a big jump. It actually is a very clever idea here. And I'll kind of explain it to you a bit and, and talk to you a bit about maybe an analogy I, I've, I've thought of here and there uh, that, that'll be kind of funny. So it appears that it was discovered that in 8.0, the newest update that came out, uh, they actually added a 1.75 gigahertz CPU clock. It's a boost mode. And it seems to have been applied to both Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild, seemingly in their latest updates. We just talked about how we did the VR stuff for it. I thought maybe it was used for that. It wasn't. Uh, it was used for a different thing. Now, of course, Breath of the Wild 1.6.0, Mario Odyssey 1.3.0. Both of those uh, apparently taking advantage of this CPU boost mode. And the only time it seems to boost up to 1.75 gigahertz is during load times. And that is very clever because, of course, load times last seconds usually, right? It could be, you know, like 20 seconds or something. But it doesn't last the entire time you're playing the game. It's going to boost up for as long as it needs to to help load stuff, and then it'll drop back down. And the reason it probably does that, by the way, for people who 
maybe always want it to run at that. Uh, most likely, the games are designed to run like in real time around a one gigahertz CPU clock. That's just the way it is. That's the way they've been designed. And it might not even see that much benefit right away because of the way they're programmed. But load screens, of course, are generally it pulling information and getting everything ready for you, whereas a faster CPU would actually give you better load times in a game like Breath of the Wild. And there was actually a person on GBA Temp that did the tests. And this is this is kind of interesting. So if you played Breath of the Wild today, maybe, or even after 8, I guess, or after they just did their update, you may have noticed, maybe, that the load times were a bit faster here and there. I mean, we're talking some of them being fairly substantial. Like loading a save file, 31 seconds to 21 seconds, uh, fast traveling 19 seconds to 11 seconds, and then entering a shrine 10 seconds to 7 seconds. Those are actually like noticeable real-time numbers that appear to have pretty much come from this boost of the CPU clock speed. It's, um, think of it this way. In Dragon Ball Z, you, of course, have Goku using the Kaioken, but he, can only, he doesn't use it very long. He just uses it as long as he needs it. That's basically what this is. They're boosting up the clock for so many seconds during a load time to get it done as fast as possible and they drop back down to normal. Because if they ran at that speed for too long, their battery would probably be drained faster. Uh, it would cause issues with thermals probably. There are probably reasons around why outside of even just the game requiring one gigahertz on the CPU to do it. It's most likely just because uh, they don't want to destroy your battery and then of course uh, put out even hotter air and of course make the system run hotter so uh interesting stuff there this is kind of neat because we're seeing nintendo play around with some of it i'm sure in r d further with the switch as they work on of course other hardware that they're of course always working on but th they seem to also be working on uh the switch and seeing what they can get out of it so apparently any update can play around with performance in the game so it's kind of neat to see a full update unlock this this higher CPU clock speed, and now games can take advantage of it. I'm also going to be curious if any third-party games seemingly update to also use that during load screens, because that's the biggest thing that this, this appears to be for, is to cut down on load times, which is awesome to hear about. Let me know what you guys think about this, because this was a really cool find, and it's a very interesting way for Nintendo to kind of, I guess... Think outside the box a bit to not destroy your, your battery life or heat up your system too much since, well, it's only going to be at that speed for either 21 seconds, 11 seconds, or 7 seconds. Apparently, Mario Odyssey has also seen a boost in its load speeds, so if you want to go check that out, see what we get there. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I'm going to see what I can do about getting that Dreamcast video up tomorrow because the system is really cool and I want to show you guys the thing. And we'll, of course, have Spawncast later on tonight so if you're not subscribed make sure you do so with notifications on so you can be notified when we go live and of course like the video if you liked it guys dislike it if not and i'll see you later on tonight